Hey everyone, welcome back to Papa's Workshop. Over the past several years, I have shown you different ways to be able to do the keyhole slots. And what that is, is being able to put a slot on the back of the project to be able to hang on the wall. I've shown you a couple different methods. I've shown you how to do it in the easel software and they have an app for it and it works fantastic. In addition to that, if you don't have a CNC machine, I showed you how to do it on a router table and that's pretty easy also. But after thinking about it, I never showed you how to do it in VCarve Desktop or the VCar Pro. Today I'm gonna to solve that problem. I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it is to be able to set it up in the VCar Pro and be able to carve the key slots into your projects. Now in this particular project, I have two slots, but you can also do just the one or you can do two, doesn't matter. Both are very easy to be able to do. So I wanna show you. Let's go ahead and get right into the design phase. First thing, let's create a new file. The size of this really doesn't matter, but I do wanna work in the inches. So I wanna switch that now. This is gonna be single sided and we can just put this at 10 by 10. Like I said, it really doesn't matter at this point. And the thickness of the material, we'll just go with 0.75 of an inch because that's pretty common. We'll use the material surface and very important, mark the center. This is where you want your XY zero is right in the center. The standard is fine, that will work well. And I don't care really about the material at this point. So I'll click OK. To do the actual keyhole slot, we only need one tool. We need the line tool right over here. We need to draw a line. And I want this line to be on the center. I make my keyhole slots anywhere from about an inch, inch and a half. I think what I'll do today though, is just make it two inches. So I'll hold down the left mouse and draw the line out. And you can see that line right there. You can also see the length of it. And right there is two inches. And I can click that. And now I can bring another line. And I wanna bring that right back to the start point. And then click and get out of that. Now that is a two inch line. That's really all you need. We have a tool path that starts here. We're gonna go down to this direction and stop. And then that tool path comes back. At this point, I can literally move this anywhere that I want. Typically, when you do a project, you're gonna have the keyhole slot in the center and it's gonna be down about a third of the way. If you wanna have two slots, all you need to do is duplicate this and put one over here and one on the other side. If you wanted to make it vertical, you could do that also just by holding down this little um, tab right here and then you could rotate it and you could put it vertical. It really doesn't matter. But for the sake of this test, we're just gonna use this one right here. You also notice when I click on the node mode, you see the green dot? That's the starting point, and it's gonna go in that direction, and it will stop here, and then it will come back to this point and exit. Now we need to set up a tool path. Come right up here to this tab right here. This is what we want. We're gonna switch from the design phase to the tool path phase, and this is the best way to do it. So now we're in the tool path section. I'm gonna click on the tool path, and we're going to use the profile. We're going to start at the surface and then how deep do we want to cut down? Well, let me show you the bit because it's going to vary from one bit to another. I have three different bits here. And these bits, this one, quite frankly, is a very, very old bit. I have no idea where I got it. These two bits, actually, I picked up at the big box store. They're very common. And sometimes they're called T-slots, and other times they're a keyhole slot. 
Either way, this is the bit that you're going to need. I use this bit more than any other. And what I like about this, I'm going to bring it up close and try to get that light on it. You can see some little notches on here. That's actually a depth gauge. And typically, the notch that I use is this one right here. That gives a very nice keyhole slot in the project. And this distance from the bottom of this bit to this notch is about 0.28 of an inch. So that's the depth that we want to use. Now, the diameter of this also will vary from one bit to another. This one is about just under 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. There are some that are larger, and of course there's some that are smaller. This one is about 3 eighths of an inch. So how do these bits actually work, and what's the process that makes the actual keyhole slot? Now the idea behind this is this bit will go straight down into the material full depth in one pass. There is no little bit at a time. It will go plunge straight down and then it will move across. It'll move across to the desired length and then stop and then reverse direction and come back and then exit out. That's how it works. So it goes straight down, moves across, and then comes back and exit out. And we have to set the tool path now to be able to do that. Now this keyhole slot that I made is actually about one inch long. And you measure from the center of this hole over to the center point, not the actual tip, because you'd be adding the radius of the bit. And this is a one inch slot. Now for our purpose today, I set the design up where this is actually two inches. Now back to the tool pass. For the cut depth, I'm gonna use 0 0.280, and that will work just fine for this test today. Now I'm gonna use an end mill, but I'm not gonna use the eighth inch. So let's select a bit. And if you look over here at the list, you're not gonna find a T-slot type bit or a keyhole slot bit. So we're gonna to need to be able to create one. Now, because of the diameters, 3 eighths of an inch, we need to have something a little bit substantial. So I'm gonna use the uh, end mill, that's a quarter of an inch. And now we're going to duplicate this file and create a bit because these feeds and these things here are not going to work well. So what I will do is copy this right down here and I'm gonna select it. And now I have a duplicate right there. But I also want to be able to identify this particular uh, bit as a keyhole. What I want to do is add a new group. I'm going to come up right here, click on this, and I'm going to add a new group here. And the new group will be this one right here, and I need to put a new name on it. The name that I'm going to put is a T-slot. And the reason being is I know over time I'm going to be adding additional bits of different sizes. I have the new group now and I have it named the T-slot. Let's now hit the apply and let's move to the next section. From there we need to be able to take the brand new bit that I had copied and bring it up into the T-slot. So you highlight the bit that I copied and just drag it up into the T-slot and there it is. Now I need to edit this bit because what we have is not going to work. First thing is I want to rename it. And the only thing I really change is in this first set of parentheses and I name it. I'll leave everything else alone. Now you can name this anything that you want, but you want to have something that you're going to easily be able to identify the bit. And once you're completely satisfied, just come down to the OK and click the OK. And that'll bring you to the next section. But there's the new bit in your new group and that's perfect. So now let's look at the other details that we need to be able to change. The first thing I wanted to show is you can choose the inches or millimeters. And of course, I'm using inches for this. And then the next is the diameter. Now this bit was 0.375, so I can just key that in. Now click that one right there, click the OK. And this brings us down to the path depth, 
we want to be able to key this into the same thing that's in the toolpath, and that was the 0 0.280. So we're only using the full depth, and that's very, very important. As far as a step over, you really don't need a step over, but I do put in a very, very small value. In this case, I put in 0 0.01. The speed is fine, but what I want to do, very, very important, is this feed rate. This feed rate is far too great. Now I think what I'll do at this point is just change the feed rate and I'll put it down to about 20 inches per minute. And that, quite frankly, may be a little bit too fast. But this is what I'm gonna use for this point. As far as the plunge rate, I wanna reduce it also, and I wanna reduce this down to a plunge rate of five inches per minute. Keep in mind, there's a lot of force behind this bit because you're doing everything in one single pass. So these are very, very important to be able to get correct. But with everything set and double checked, the only thing that's left is to be able to come down and hit the apply button. And that will establish your brand new bit. All that's left to do is hit the select and that will put the bit into our toolpath um, settings. And that's what we want. And you can see everything right there. So from there, let's move on down. You want to verify that it is doing it in one pass. And in this section, you want this to cut on the tool path. You don't want anything else other than on the tool path. These other sections down here, make sure they are not checked. You do not need this. You do not need the tabs. Make sure it's unchecked. And make sure that you do not have ramps. That is very important. No ramping. And at this point, only thing that's left is to rename this and then we'll calculate the tool path. Now that we've got it calculated, you can actually see what's happening. It's going from this center point of the project up and going through this process to cut that keyhole slot. And that will work perfectly just as it is. What I want to be able to do too is actually preview this for you. That is the T-slot. Now it still shows it as an end mill. That's okay. So let's set up the machine now and let's test this. Now the other thing that I want to be able to do, and I do this all the time, we're going to go back over to the 2D in the design function. Oftentimes what I will do is mark the project board exactly where I want the center point. So what I want to do is take this keyhole slot and put it right on that center dot. Because in my designs, when I lay this out, I will do that very thing. Now, the reason I didn't do that to begin with, and it's a little bit hard to see in the camera, but this is zoomed in real close. And you can see that's the path. And let me add the nodes in there. Now we can see the nodes. And you can see that's the start point. You have that little arrow and it will come down. I want to save the toolpath now. And when I click on Save Toolpath, you can see that this toolpath is highlighted right here. And you can see, again, here's the green square. And this is a start point. You can see the arrows going down to this point, stopping, and then you can see it returning. So that's perfect. So I'm going to click Save Toolpath. Now I made a folder in my uh, thumb drive with the keyhole in it. So this will be the file right here, keyhole 3H, and that is the keyhole bit. We will save that. Now let's set the machine up and give this a try. When you're changing the bits, how often do you look at the collet itself and clean it? You see all that dirt in there and sawdust? That needs to be cleaned out because over time, guess what? That's going to prevent that call it from doing its job properly and you're going to have some bits slipping and ruining a project so i'm going to clean this out but this is the one that i'm going to be using today it's the quarter inch and you can see it's completely clean so let me grab the bit we'll put this in another question that i get asked often is how far should the bit go in should it go all the way down to here no it shouldn't it really only needs to go to the end of the collet itself. So 
So I like to go just beyond that, and that works real well. So typically what I will do is drop the collet. <laughs> okay. So typically what I will do is just use my thumb right here. I will set the depth right where I want it. And then I can just go right down and screw it on. There we go. And then I'll use the wrenches and finish tightening it. It doesn't have to be overly tight. You just want it to have it good and snug. And that's it. We'll clean this bit and we'll clean the collet and get it ready for the next use. Now this is just a scrap piece of wood, but if this was a real project, I would actually measure over and get the center and have this placed exactly where I want it. And then I would mark an X. And that would be the center point. Process is gonna go from this point over the inch, plunge down, move across, and then come back and exit out. Now I'm using my glue and tape method again, and I'm going to line that up right there so I know exactly where to put this piece of tape. And I got that tape a little bit long, but it needs to go right there. And we'll just cut off this excess. And remember, I'm using a Starbond Thick CA glue to be able to hold this material down. And I have the discount codes in the description below. I sprayed it with the accelerator and we'll put this down. Hold it down for just a moment. Now there is a tremendous amount of side load pressure that pushes on here. I like to be able to reinforce that just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere at all. I put it down another board just as an insurance policy to make sure that it doesn't move. Uh, we'll screw that in right here. And there we go. That way we have an insurance policy to make sure that that forward pressure going in on the x-axis is not going to move that board and break that glue joint. I've opened up the open builds controller and you can see where it's asking me to connect and I will do that. We'll get this alarm code, we'll click to unlock and now we're ready to home the machine. And this is going to move right over to the bottom left hand corner of the machine and that will be the machine home location. From there, we're going to move it up to that center little crosshair that I put on the material itself. Okay, the machine is now homed, so let's get it over to the center point of the project itself. Now, here is my X right here, so that's where I want to bring that over, and we're fairly close. And that's really good. That's sitting right on top of this. So we're going to set that now as my work zero position for the X and the Y axis. So I can come right up here and set the zero point and set the zero point. And now that is taken care of. The only thing that's left is to do the probe. Now I need to raise this up a little bit higher so that the probe will be able to fit underneath there. And that should be good. So there's the probe set in position. I'll click on the probe, confirm my position, and then probe. That is it. The probe is now completely done. And we have the Z height set. And now it's time to load the file. So open G code. We'll click right here. And we will go back to my keyhole. 
and there's a file right there and we will open that And that's just how quick it is. Let me get the vacuum. We'll blow this off and take a look at it. So after vacuuming off the sawdust, you can see that is a beautiful keyhole slot that goes the two inches long. And that's exactly what we wanted. I want to give you a real good close up of exactly what that looks like. And if you look down in here, so you can see this edge right here. That's actually what the project where this keeps the screw from falling out. And of course, that's on the top side as well as the bottom side. And your screw will just drop right into there. The reason you have this distance is so that you can make sure that it's perfectly balanced. Now, if you put two keyhole slots in, then that eliminates the problem for that pitcher to be able to tilt. And it'll be perfectly centered, balanced, and level. So that's just how easy it is to be able to create the keyhole slots in VCAR Pro. And again, you can do this for the VCAR desktop. Well, there you go. You've actually learned a couple of things today. One, you learned how to be able to create the toolpath necessary for the keyhole slot in VCAR desktop or VCAR Pro. In addition, don't forget, I've shown you in videos before exactly how to do it with the Easel software using their app. And if you don't have a CNC machine, that's okay because I have videos out there that show you how to do it on a router table. So now you have all the different methods to be able to create the keyhole slots. In addition to that, today I showed you how to set up a new tool group. That's not bad because now when you get those specialty bits, you can put them into that group and be able to pull them up anytime that you need them. Well, I hope if you like this video and I more importantly, I hope you learned something. If you did, give me that thumbs up and while you're there, hit that little subscribe button. I would appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye now.